Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us for another edition of Texas Insider TV, brought to you by Speedstream. I'm Jim Cardle. In the home stretch of a legislative session that's focused, amongst other things, on transparency and the state budget, State Rep Dan Flynn from House District 2 is in his sixth term. He's on the Homeland Security Committee. He's vice chairman of the Financial Services Committee and co-chair of the Government Transparency and Operations Committee. We're pleased to be able to visit with Dan Flynn today. Dan, thanks for joining us. You bet. It's my pleasure to be here. As I mentioned, you're on a number of key committees. We're in the home stretch with under a couple weeks to go, and in particular with a bond election and city elections having just passed. I want to get to some of your initiatives there in a minute if I could. But first, tell us just generally, what's the mood of the House, the legislature, any concerns for the budget? What do you think uh, is the prognosis for the last week here in the session? been a very interesting session and it seems like every bill that comes before the House somebody mentions the word transparency and uh, since uh, I co-chair that committee it's been very interesting to see the things that have come through here. As far as the budget's concerned I think the uh, uh, conference committee is uh, they're, they're going through the various articles and they're kind of down to about uh, maybe uh, two or three articles that uh, they haven't quite come together with. Of course we in the House always believe the Senate likes to spend too much money, and uh, we, uh, we like to try to hold them back sometimes. And I think, uh, I think we'll have a budget. It's been a fairly normal, so to speak, congenial session. Are you feeling that's going to continue for the duration, or is that an accurate depiction? Well, you know, every session is different, and everything has their own special uh, process that we go through. Uh, everyone has said along the way that it seems like we're going so slow and uh, we're not at the same level that we've been in past sessions. But I've talked to uh, Chris Greasel, our parliamentarian, and I think we were within uh, 15 or 20 bills passage of where we were this time last session. So uh, I guess it's a little deceptive. And, and of course, everybody, if, if your bill's not moving, then things are not uh, as, as congenial as you'd like for it to be. But uh, overall, I think it has been a, a session where uh, uh, we've, we've had a lot of uh, bipartisan support, and yet we're continuing to push some of the issues that are important to us. I'm a little disappointed in some of the areas that uh, have not been uh, uh, pushed and uh, I would uh, like to see that. And, and as we go through the process, and when the budget comes back, you'll see a lot of amendments, and that's where um, people's personalities start coming out. Sure to be some cheap entertainment, so to speak. But uh, let's get into, if I can, some of these initiatives you've been working on, in particular what's known as capital appreciation bonds, and that gets into transparency in a second. But um, your bill, I believe it's 3416, you moved out of the House. You're working on the permanent school fund guarantees and the fiscal soundness of our state's school districts amongst other local entities. Talk a little bit about that effort and tell us where you are, please. Well, quite frankly, I feel uh, this was, uh, I was laid into the game on this. I, I was not aware of what uh, capital appreciation bonds, or CABs as they're called, was all about. And it came to my attention through uh, one of the uh, focus groups here in Austin. And uh, the more I started learning about it, it was kind of a, a scary thought that uh, we're sitting here looking at the permanent school fund uh, guarantees right at $100 billion in uh, bond debt. And the, the PSF, as it's known, is currently, I believe, just under $30, million, $30 billion. I'm not sure about that number, but that sounds 25, right. 25, yeah. Uh, principal, $58 billion is what's owed, $38 billion in interest due the last time I uh, uh, looked at it. Now, you're talking about 20, 30, 40 years down the road. But, you know, we fuss about the uh, national debt and how we're uh, uh, taking advantage of our grandkids. Well, this is our great-grandkids, and it's kind of scary to me. And so we filed a bill to try to put some kind of restrictions, and Chewy Hinojosa in the Senate has a, a companion bill, and we're working together, and we've passed it in the House, and we have passed uh, uh, the bill in the Senate. Now it's going to get to uh, the conference, and, and we'll see if we can't work it out. But with 20 school districts owing over $2 billion, uh, that is, that's concerning to me. Uh, and then some of the school districts, uh, they have empty school buildings, and they're still wanting to spend more money on bonds. And I think there needs to be some kind of parameters. We want to continue to provide the flexibility for those that have used them prudently. 
but uh, it is an issue that uh, needs to be brought to the public's attention. Okay, so the, the state of Texas, we have approximately 1,100 ISDs. Correct. You're mentioning the 20 with that huge amount of debt. Capital appreciation bonds, as I understand it, allow school districts to issue debt that's severely discounted with essentially a balloon payment at the end, a huge financial obligation, correct? Yes, that's exactly right. The interest is added on the end. And uh, in their uh, audit reports, basically they, they respond to their uh, the principal, but they don't address the interest. And the interest continue to go on. All you have to do is just kind of do some basic calculation of what a hundred million dollar bond would be in 30, 40 years. And it's uh, staggering. So they, they sell them essentially at 25, 30 cents on the dollar and then in projected revenues pay it off. How concerned are you that the actual dollar amounts, what's your analysis of the exposure for the state and the ISDs? Right, right now, you know, because the rates are so low, mm -hmm. it sounds like a good deal. But you remember, I was a bank president, and uh, I remember when the prime rate was 22%. And I have no reason to believe that we won't see inflation down the road. And if you've got a 30, 40 year bond, uh, it could be staggering what could happen to us. And that's why we need to have some parameters. We need to have, uh, and yet provide some flexibility for those districts that are using them prudently. And that's what we're trying to do in this bill that we're uh, hoping to uh, pass this session. Okay, good effort there. Something that's certainly going to be of interest to the taxpayers. Let's move if we can. And folks, again, we're visiting with State Rep Dan Flynn from House District 2. Representative, your co chair of the Transparency and Government Operations Committee. Just a couple weeks ago, you passed two significant bills in that regard. Tell us what you're doing in terms of making sure that the public knows what the government's doing and that the government's required to be transparent about it. This is probably the last committee that was uh, uh, determined uh, as the House was getting under, under uh, uh, direction and, and uh, certainly the Senate. And I basically had kind of started over one of those morning breakfasts with the, uh, the governor, lieutenant governor, and the speaker uh, where some issues had been brought to their attention. And uh, they were concerned that there was not transparency in executive salaries, in executive gifts, and in uh, uh, making sure that the public is aware of what's happening on, online. So we filed three bills, basically. We've got a great committee. I'm the co-chair, Carol Alvarado from uh, Houston is, is my co-chair, and, and she and I have, you know, it's, it's kind of interesting. She's a Democrat, and I'm a Republican. So it's been a very bipartisan uh, committee. And as I told, uh, told the speaker yesterday, I said, you know, it's kind of been interesting. Uh, we, we have four and four, and yet we have agreed on everything that's been done on this committee. And we've kicked out these three bills that will address executive salaries. It will address those gifts that are coming. You know, we found out that one of our universities has, uh, gave away a $500,000 uh, loan, uh, and, and yet it wasn't really reported, and, and we know that, that they're using uh, those kind of funds. Now, that stopped. As you bring these things to the attention of uh, the uh, various entities, you're finding out that, you know what, uh, had that been transparent in the, in the past, it wouldn't have happened. And now in the future, I think that you'll see some changes being made, and we're real, real, real pleased with what's happening there. Uh, those bills that are in the Senate, uh, and I think that uh, we'll we'll see them pass because they've been passed on both the floor and the House. And uh, now it's just a conference committee. And uh, Chewy Hinojosa carried the bill in the uh, in the Senate, and uh, I've already had conversations with Chewy, and I'm confident that he and I will be able to work out any differences because my bill is a little different than his. I've provided a little bit more flexibility. Uh, to make sure that we know that those school districts that have used these prudently are not hurt because it is a good tool, mm -hmm. but yet used uh, with discretion it works, but without discretion you've got some real problems. Moderation and everything, yes. good tenant in life, but in particular let me ask you just to wrap up because as I recall looking at those efforts, there's some strong audit functions that you're going to require which seems to be key. Yes. Talk about that for one second. Well, minute if you can. the school districts, not, they, they will always uh, report what their debt is, but they don't report what the interest is going to be. And, and with interest rates low and the potential of them going up, obviously that's going to be a huge item. And there needs to be more transparency in what we're doing with that. And, and that audit will require it. They'll be posting those audits online. And uh, I think here again, as I, I tell everyone, it's taxpayer money. 
and we have a responsibility to be sure that uh, taxpayers are aware of what they're signing. I mean, if you're, you're going in one of these school districts that has this huge debt, uh, it's kind of foolish to believe that it's not going to affect your property values. Absolutely. Very good. Well, Representative, we're going to have to leave it there. Appreciate your time coming in. Always my pleasure. We'll have you back, folks. One of the leading conservatives in the House of Representatives, six-term state rep Dan Flynn from Van. Appreciate your time coming in. Folks, be sure to join us again for another edition of Texas Insider TV brought to you by Speedstream. I'm Jim Cardle. Thanks for joining us. Well,